Hello, everyone. We will start uh, the next session. Uh, please, uh, if you have questions, leave it for after the talk. There will be time for questions. And the floor is yours. OK. So morning, everyone. I am uh, <coughs> Sandil Kumaran. Uh, I work for uh, Lenaro. And I'm also a Debian maintainer. So this talk is about like uh, LXC uh, with Debian, but uh, it's a generic uh, thing uh, where I want to introduce a specific use case uh, in order to like uh, test Android devices. So, so to give uh, a small introduction about me, like uh, I uh, work for uh, uh, work as a Lava software engineer. Uh, for the Lava project, which is nothing but a, uh, a project uh, uh, which is uh, used for automation within Linaro and uh, elsewhere. So it's called Linaro Automated Validation Architecture. And uh, you can like uh, see a lot of uh, packages uh, uh, with respect to uh, Lava, which is available in Debian. So uh, like installing Lava is just apt-get install uh, Lava in Debian. So <clears throat> I'm one of the maintainers of uh, Lava Star packages uh, within uh, Debian. And apart from that, uh, uh, I maintain uh, some uh, couple of uh, Django-related packages, uh, specifically Django Compact and uh, Django Hijack. And I used to uh, like uh, work for a Subversion project. And uh, I'm uh, one of the full committers of uh, Apache Software Foundation, uh, contributing to uh, like Subversion project. So with that, uh, like, uh, let's move on to the uh, uh, <coughs> agenda of this talk. So basically, like, uh, we'll uh, see an introduction on Linux containers. So we, uh, I mean, uh, had a talk on Tuesday with respect to uh, LXT. Uh, like, uh, Stephanie Graber uh, was uh, like uh, delivering that. So this is uh, the basics of uh, something before like uh, LXT. So before LXT, we used to have like uh, LXE. Which uh, I mean, LXT uh, tried to like uh, improve upon uh, like the user pa user space tools, uh, which LXE was uh, providing. So uh, we'll have an introduction, and then uh, we'll see the available packages in Debian, and also uh, a short demo on uh, the installation configuration and basic usage of uh, LXE. Uh, and then like uh, we'll go with I have. Uh, <coughs> Uh, Google uh, Pixel phone uh, over here. So I'll use this as a device in order to like uh, connect uh, to uh, see like how we can like uh, attach this device within an LXE container uh, in order to uh, do things like uh, fast boot. I mean, uh, communicate with fast boot and ADB. So. <clears throat> To uh, define LXE containers, uh, so it provides uh, an isolated environment uh, with uh, all the uh, like uh, uh, processes uh, combined into uh, specific, uh, I mean, uh, uh, namespace with uh, to provide uh, uh, an operating system within uh, the host machine. So you can have uh, n number of uh, containers uh, within uh, the host machine. And uh, each one will be like uh, giving, providing you an isolated space. So this, that is uh, one uh, stuff. Uh, all these containers will be like uh, limited to the uh, same kernel uh, which the host machine has been uh, used. So that's to uh, give an overview on uh, what a container is. So it's basically an isolated like uh, operating system environment. Uh, we call uh, this as system containers. Uh, like uh, in uh, uh, unlike uh, the other uh, container technology which exists like. Uh, Docker, uh, which are like application containers. So a system container like uh, tries to uh, like contain uh, the entire operating system uh, within itself and uh, provides an isolated space. So there are some uh, like uh, differences uh, from traditional virtualization. Uh, like uh, the containers are uh, like uh, uh, I mean uh, are lightweight uh, in the sense like uh, they don't have uh, uh, things like uh, emulators in between in order to like uh, start up, and there is no like. Uh, like a translation or interpretation which is happening in between uh, the container and the uh, uh, like uh, underlying uh, host machine and uh, there are other things like uh, uh, like containers uh, start uh, quickly and also like uh, sometimes uh, when uh, you are like uh, moving a container from one uh, like uh, host machine to another and if you are like uh, having the same kind of uh, kernel uh, with uh, both these uh, host machine uh, it may uh, like uh, prove to be uh, like portable so these are uh, some of the advantages of uh, using like uh, containers, and uh, I mean uh, LXE uh, is something uh, like uh, which was 
uh, which provides the user space tools uh, in order to like uh, uh, exploit some of the uh, kernel features in order to provide a container. Uh, like uh, some of the kernel features which enable containers are like uh, we have the namespaces, C groups, and uh, uh, all the uh, mount file systems and everything. So. Uh, all these things combined together, uh, we have this LXC user space, which provides uh, certain commands in order to like set up uh, processes in isolation so that you uh, get an uh, operating system environment within the host environment. So some of the packages uh, with respect to LXC, uh, which are available as part of uh, Debian uh, stretch release, uh, I mean, uh, there is a slight difference, like uh, from uh, JC to Stretch. Uh, there are some packages which have been uh, removed uh, from JC, but uh, these are like uh, the basic uh, packages which are available currently in uh, Stretch. So you have the LXC, which is, uh, I mean, uh, that's the main uh, like uh, package which provides the LXC environment or LXC commands. Uh, so uh, it's nothing but the, uh, as I said before, it's the user space tools, and libLXC uh, is the one which enables the uh, us to use. Uh, LXE. And we have uh, different bindings like the Python LXC uh, for the uh, Python language and Lua LXC for uh, the uh, Lua uh, I mean, uh, bindings. And uh, <coughs> uh, LXC CTL uh, is uh, something uh, where uh, it, it again provides a command line tool in order to like, uh, manage LXC containers. There are other uh, like, uh, packages like uh, Vagrant uh, LXC. Uh, where uh, you can like uh, uh, create containers and like uh, manage containers with the help of uh, Vagrant. Uh, uh, so Vagrant LXC provides uh, a, a plugin or uh, a way in order to like manage LXC containers uh, with uh, Vagrant environment. So uh, this, these are the uh, packages available. And then like, uh, let's move on to the installation configuration. This is uh, very simple as in any uh, like uh, Debian package. Uh, so it's uh, simple to uh, install LXC. Uh, it's a apt install like uh, LXC or apt-get install or aptitude install LXC. So <clears throat> I'll uh, just show you a uh, short demo. So it's visible to everyone. Okay. So. Uh, for the purpose of this demo, what I'm going to do is like uh, I'm going to run uh, uh, the uh, installation of LXC within an LXC environment so that like uh, I have a, a clean mission uh, where I can install packages. So it's basically a nested container, but uh, uh, just this, this is for the de demo purpose instead of uh, doing it on my host machine because my host machine already has uh, LXC installed. So think uh, this as my host machine. Uh, so from OK, so this is my host machine. Uh, let me like uh, first. Uh, Update. Okay. Before like uh, trying to like install my LXE, I want to like uh, get the latest, uh, which is available. It should be pretty new, but uh, just in case, like uh, I'm not getting the latest LXE packages. So as I said before, like uh, installing LXC is like apt install LXC. So it installs a lot of packages. OK, so now uh, we have LXE installed. So let me uh, show you some uh, like config file, basic config files, uh, which are required for LXE. So we have uh, all the uh, configuration. This is the default configuration for whatever like uh, container which you create uh, within, uh, like, uh, with, with the help of LXE. 
so it applies to all the containers uh, which uh, gets created henceforth. So uh, with respect to like Debian, uh, like uh, if you see like uh, there is a network type of empty. So we don't have uh, uh, any network uh, which is pre-configured for us. Uh, this is not the same case with uh, like uh, uh, when, when we are trying to like uh, install LXC uh, or LXC containers with uh, Ubuntu or uh, uh, any other distro. Like uh, they they have their own. Like uh, for example, in, in the case of Ubuntu, like uh, you have uh, App Armor profiles, and also there is a basic networking uh, which is uh, set up uh, uh, using uh, lib libvirt. Uh, so, in case of Debian, like uh, Debian provides uh, a pristine version of things, so uh, everything should be configured uh, by us, uh, specifically in case of networking, because networking becomes uh, important uh, in the case of uh, using an LXC container effectively. Uh, whether you want to like install packages or uh, you want to like work with the con container or you want to like communicate with uh, the external world, so uh, we require ne uh, networking. So there are different methods of, uh, I mean, uh, installing uh, network. With respect to like, uh, <clears throat> so one of the uh, like uh, one of the like uh, recommended or uh, the easiest way to install uh, uh, networking for uh, LXC containers is used to uh, uh, it is to use the default uh, network uh, which is provided by uh, libvirt-d. So we can like uh, I'll show you uh, a sample configuration of how it uh, may look like. So if you see here, like uh, this uh, virtual uh, bridge uh, is being created by uh, libvirt. So once you install like uh, libvirt, uh, we we we'll, uh, we can like uh, create a virtual bridge. Uh, it, it's it's one of the simplest thing which we can do as far as like uh, configuring network. There are like other configurations uh, depending upon like uh, how comfortable with you uh, you're with in order to like uh, create bridges and uh, play around with this. Like you can uh, like uh, use uh, different. Uh, I mean whatever way you're comfortable with. So. Having said that, like uh, let's uh, try to like uh, create a L LXC container. Uh, I mean, uh, some of the default paths where LXC containers gets created are uh, so. Whenever we initialize a container, so everything goes inside uh, var lib uh, like LXC. So the container rootfs uh, like uh, gets created inside this folder, and uh, there is uh, another folder called uh, cache. So here, uh, what happens is when you like initialize a container for the first time, I'll just uh, show you like uh, how to like create a container, like uh, how to like use the container and then uh, destroy it uh, in uh, in some time. So before that, I just want to like uh, show you what are the different paths involved. So the first thing is like uh, the configuration which we saw about, uh, which is in etc lxc uh, default .conf. Uh, that is uh, applying for all the uh, containers. And the second thing is the uh, cache. So whenever we uh, try to like uh, install uh, a specific operating system, uh, so it gets cached inside uh, this location. Uh, so for example, uh, if you want to like uh, install Debian stretch, the root fs uh, gets cached here. And then like uh, for the uh, like, uh, if you want to like uh, create the second container, instead of like fetching everything from the internet once again, uh, like uh, it consults the cache first. If the cache is up to date, like uh, the root fs gets uh, like initialized uh, uh, directly from there for the new container. So let me show you like uh, okay so let me uh, create a container so i'm uh, trying to like uh, create a, a container named stretch hyphen demo and uh, the uh, uh, I, I'll be using like a stretch release, and uh, the template which I'll be using is uh, Debian. So this is uh, what uh, my I mean. Uh, this how I create a container. So before that, like uh, let's see like what are the uh, different uh, I mean what are these templates uh, are all about. So there are two uh, types of templates. Uh, so one is uh, a download template, and the other one is OS specific template. So OS specific templates are uh, something like uh, you can you have different templates. These are not uh, these are nothing but like the OS specific templates are uh, like pure uh, shell scripts, uh, which is provided by uh, the LXE package itself. 
so what happens is like when you want to like uh, initialize uh, say for example a fedora uh, based container so the specific uh, os uh, based template could be used uh, in this case like uh, if you see uh, i mean uh, the download template is quite different from the os specific template where the download template tries to like uh, fetch images uh, from uh, a server called uh, images.linuxcontainers.org uh, uh, or uh, any other specific server depending upon uh, how you uh, configured things so this uh, os specific template uh, uh, provides uh, uh, i mean bootstraps uh, the uh, operating system or uh, the root fs within the uh, like uh, same machine for example if we uh, use uh, a debian template in case of uh, for i mean in order to create a container uh, what a debian template does is it uh, uses a deb bootstrap in order to like create the root fs on your uh, same machine and then like uh, like uh, creates the container from that root fs so there are some uh, basic things uh, like uh, the first thing is like you need to create a container and once a container is created you need to start the container and then uh, like you can like uh, do uh, whatever like uh, you want a uh, play around within the container or you can like set that container up uh, with uh, different uh, configurations which you want in order to run uh, different kinds of software and then there is uh, uh, i mean uh, means to like stop the container and then like uh, uh, finally like if you don't want to uh, don't want the container anymore uh, you can uh, destroy it so this uh, how uh, the flow uh, looks like so i mean i have uh, some uh, like uh, lines uh, just uh, cut off here so here we have uh, the destroy uh, step so if you see like uh, the uh, container gets created and uh, it will be in stop state uh, once we issue like start uh, the container will be in starting state and then uh, it can go to like uh, running uh, running is a, a state where uh, the container uh, runs uh, and then like uh, you can use it as a, a separate operating system from different from your uh, host machine and then like uh, it can go to stopping and uh, you can freeze or unfreeze the container so these kind of uh, these kind of freeze and unfreeze uh, i mean states are being uh, used uh, within uh, lxd in order to like uh, do uh, i mean uh, uh, snapshotting and uh, different kind of uh, i mean uh, advanced stuff so uh, as far as lxc is concerned like uh, these are uh, the uh, basic uh, states in which uh, a container uh, exists so <coughs> uh i mean i'll uh, show you like uh before getting into that i'll show you like how to create a container so this is a command lxc create and i'm using the debian template and then uh, like uh, i'm uh, giving the container name as stretch demo and the release i'm using is stretch since uh, like uh, i've already like uh, tried installing uh, this in this specific container uh, i mean creating this container uh, i mean already uh, the root of it has been cached so it should be quick enough so the container got created so let's try to like uh, start the container which we created uh, just now called stretch demo so a container gets uh, i mean uh, it will be uh, started in the background uh, as a daemon so if you want to like check what is the status of my container so i can see uh, with lxcls uh, command so the name of my container is stretch demo and state uh, it is in is running and uh, i mean uh, i haven't like configured any kind of networking within this uh, nested container so uh, like uh, there is no ipv4 uh, or ipv6 address that has been fetched yet so in order to like uh, the simplest way to uh, like log in or attach to a container is to uh, like use the lxc attach command so you can see like uh, i'm uh, right now inside the uh, container which i uh, just created so if you see like this is a stretch container uh so uh and then uh, this is a kernel that has been used uh, for this container so le let's uh, like uh create another container with the help of i mean uh, another container with the ubuntu template i'm uh, trying to create a, a zesty container uh based upon uh, the ubuntu template 
again uh, the root of this for this is also cached uh, i just want to like uh, because it uh, take quite few minutes in order to like uh, get the container uh, bootstrapped so i just cached it uh, so that uh, we can uh, use it for the demo so now our uh, our ubuntu container is created so let me uh, try to start this container so the start commands take the name takes the name of the container before that i'll show you like whether uh, what state uh, this container is in so a stretch demo container is running and uh, the ubuntu container which we just created is in a uh, stop state so i am starting this container so if you see like a uh, ubuntu container is running and let me attach to this container So if you see, like uh, I have a, a Zesty container which is uh, running. Okay, so again, uh, stopping containers is uh, uh, simple and trivial. So uh, in order to stop a container, you issue LXC stop. So if you see, our Ubuntu containers again uh, went to stop state, and then like in order to like. Uh, get rid of the container entirely uh, from the host machine we can uh, make use of lxc destroy so it will completely destroy the container and uh, it's an irreversible action okay <clears throat> so let me give uh, some background before uh, i get into like uh, uh, how to like uh, uh, interact with uh, android device for example uh, this phone which i have here so we uh, work for a project called uh, Lenaro Automated Validation Architecture. So it looks, the project uh, interface looks like this. So if you see here, like, uh, I mean, uh, this project is uh, basically used in order to like, uh, do uh, testing on different kind of devices and uh, like uh, validate, uh, I mean, uh, the primary purpose of this is to automate tests uh, and deploy tests on different boards and collect results. So we uh, support like uh, different uh, ARM-based devices and also like x86 is possible. Uh, so we have uh, like uh, devices like uh, the Hi-Key, Dragon Board, and all the 96 boards and uh, QB trucks and different uh, boards like this. So what happens is uh, there is a dispatcher uh, uh, to which these boards are connected. Uh, and there is a master server. So once you submit uh, a test job, what happens is the master server takes this test job and then like uh, gives it to a dispatcher. A dispatcher is nothing but uh, a server uh, to which the devices are uh, connected to it. So once the dispatcher re receives this uh, job, uh, what happens is it tries to like uh, run uh, different tests on the uh, device under test. And all these things has to be automated without any uh, manual intervention. So previously, what we uh, used to do is uh, we used to like uh, run tests uh, directly by communicating with the uh, dispatcher when it, uh, I mean, uh, to the uh, device under test. So when it comes to Android devices, uh, we use uh, basically use uh, two uh, like uh, uh, met methods in order to communicate. Uh, one is uh, uh, with the help of uh, ADB, uh, the uh, uh, Android debug bridge, and the other one is uh, by using uh, Fastboot. So in order to like flash images to uh, the Android devices, we use uh, Fastboot. And in order to like uh, uh, once the uh, uh, Android image has been booted on the device, we use ADB in order to communicate with the device. So uh, Different tests uh, which we run uh, require different versions of uh, software. For example, certain like uh, there is a uh, test suite called uh, CTS, the compatibility test suite, uh, which is uh, being provided by uh, Android. So this test suite uh, requires different versions of uh, Java in order to like run on, uh, diff uh, in order to test different uh, versions of Android builds. So in order to like uh, like have different versions of uh, Java, uh, I mean uh, we uh, uh, had to like. Uh, put those uh, versions of uh, Java in a Lava Dispatcher, which is a production uh, server which is running uh, in order to like, uh, communicate with the uh, devices. So this posed an uh, important problem where uh, we uh, don't want to like, maintain a lot of uh, like soft different versions of software inside the uh, server machine. So that uh, becomes uh, unmanageable at a certain point of time. 
So in order to like uh, overcome that, we uh, try to like uh, introduce uh, the Linux containers. Uh, so what happens is there is this dispatcher, and then uh, there is a uh, intermediate uh, like uh, transparent uh, device uh, called the uh, LXC container, and then from the LXC container we uh, like uh, communicate with the uh, devices. So this is uh, how the uh, like uh, Lava setup uh, works. Uh, with respect to like uh, currently uh, it works with respect to uh, like uh, testing like uh, different devices uh, with the uh, in an in an automated way so <clears throat> Having said that, like uh, we have one LXC, I mean, uh, a LXC container will be created on the fly in order to like uh, attach to uh, device under test, and then like uh, we'll uh, fire a test on uh, based on that. So uh, there is one uh, important problem. Uh, say, for example, uh, if a device gets attached to the host machine, we need to like give access to this device to the uh, container. So there are different, uh, I mean, uh, says for example, uh, I'll show you like. So this is the uh, D message output uh, on my host machine, uh, which is this laptop. So I have. Uh, I have this uh, uh, Pixel phone. Uh, so basically, uh, I've uh, put it into uh, fast boot mode uh, uh, so that like uh, I can like attach it uh, to the host machine or any container, and then like uh, I can like uh, run uh, fast boot commands on that. So let me like uh, attach this phone via the USB port to the host machine. Okay, so you can see uh, this is the uh, phone. Uh, this is the serial number of the phone, uh, which got at attached uh, right now. So, if I uh, try to like access this phone uh, within my uh, container, So I'm uh, trying to like uh, create a container called uh, Stretch Demo, and then uh, in on my uh, like uh, host machine, and then I'm starting the container. Let me uh, attach to it. So this uh, my container, and uh, my host machine has uh, the phone directly. Con uh, I mean uh, connected to it. So right now I uh, want to like access uh, this phone uh, via fastboot within my container. So let me like uh, install fastboot before that, and also ADB. So these are like uh, tools you know uh, used in order to like communicate with uh, Android devices. Okay, so right now we have uh, fastboot installed. I'm trying to like access uh, this phone with, from within the container, so it won't uh, appear over there because like uh, I need to like add this device to the container explicitly. Now, uh, when <clears throat> when trying to like uh, do this uh, within the Lava project, uh, we uh, were trying to like automate uh, this entire process where a container gets created and there is uh, a device uh, attached to the host machine. So we want to like give access to this uh, uh, to this device uh, 
to the I mean uh, to the device uh, from within the container. So in order to like uh, run the test. So in this case, uh, like uh, we uh, like followed different methodologies in order to like uh, identify uh, when a device gets uh, attached or uh, it gets reenumerated and things like that. So uh, we've sorted to uh, one uh, like uh, uh, method right now uh, in order to, like. Uh, uh, automatically like identify uh, things uh, i mean uh, when a device gets attached and gets detached uh, from the host machine uh, basically via uh, udev so we have written uh, uh, we have uh, a udev rule which uh, is similar to this So uh, what it does is like uh, it sees uh, an add action uh, within uh, the UDEV daemon. And if there is an add action uh, with the serial number of the device, which is uh, FA6B, whatever, uh, so that is uh, the uh, serial number of uh, the phone which I have. And then like uh, it creates a, a symlink called uh, stretch-demo, uh, just a symlink. And then like uh, it runs a script uh, called uh, lava LXE device add. So this uh, script uh, could be named uh, anything. So what this script's, script contains is, so <clears throat> it uh, does a LXE device command, and then like uh, it gets the name of the container, and then uh, it adds the sim link uh, of the uh, device to the uh, container. So once this uh, rule, so what, I'm, uh, what I'll do is like I'll copy this rule to the udev rules dot d directory okay so now if you see like uh, i have this rule as part of the uh, udev uh, rules uh, directory so once this is there i'll uh, reload uh, the udev rules so so once the uh, rules are uh, reloaded so what happens is let's let's watch the so as you can see like my container stretch demo didn't uh, show any fast food devices right now so what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to like uh, unplug uh, the phone here, so you can see device number 22 has been disconnected, and then like uh, I replug it just to like trigger an add action uh, in the UDEV as per our, uh, the rule which we have written. So you can see like uh, a, a new device has appeared. So that is our uh, phone which got re-added. So now if I uh, like try to do a fast food devices, it should show up. Uh, but it doesn't. OK. So let me like uh, try to like run the command directly in order to attach this device to the container which I have. So basically like uh, the command in order to do that is we do a LXE device and uh, we give the container name and then like uh, we say add. So this is basically in order to like um, convert uh, the sim link into uh, the proper uh, hard link of the device. So maybe it is somewhere here. OK, so I've added uh, the device uh, stretch uh, to the stretch demo container, uh, which is nothing but here.
so we uh, do have uh, the fast food device uh, over here so let me like uh, try to like start uh, this device uh, from fast boot so that it uh, gets into like uh, uh, the android operating system and uh, i'll just uh, show you a quick uh, way in order to communicate uh, with the help of adb Okay, uh, now the uh, system is booted. So uh, I have uh, Android uh, running on this uh, like uh, phone. Let me uh, try to access the device using ADB. Okay. So the device did appear uh, uh, with ADB. The only thing is, like, uh, of course, uh, on the phone, it is asking for uh, the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, authorization in order to allow this uh, LXC container. So I'm just authorizing that and giving an OK. So when uh, we have a AOSP uh, like uh, <coughs> Build uh, where we have like uh, debug enabled by uh, default. We don't want to like uh, do this authorization manually, uh, so that that'll be helpful for uh, authorization. So if you see like uh, the ADB device uh, is available over here, and then I'm trying to like reboot to fastboot again. So you can see the uh, phone uh, rebooted into fastboot with the ADB command which I uh, provided. Let me try to like see. Okay, so the uh, device did appear in fastboot. So basically, like uh, I haven't done any LXC add. Uh, I mean, LXC device add command uh, for each of these things because uh, the UDEV rule, which I've written here, basically this rule. is taking care of uh, like uh, the addition and uh, like removal of the devices automatically so this will be pretty useful when you want to like uh, like do android testing uh, from within a container and uh, specifically when uh, the android testing requires different kinds of java versions or different kind of tools that needs to be installed in your host machine and uh, as, as you can see, if it is a direct host machine, like uh, UDEV uh, takes care of uh, things in order to like uh, see when a device gets added and uh, when a device gets deleted or uh, removed. But uh, in the case of container, you need to do that explicitly. If we uh, have a UDEV rule uh, in such a way so that uh, it will track uh, when the device gets added or removed, uh, it automatically like uh, does that for the specific container which we have uh, specified uh, via a small script uh, which we have over there. So this uh, helps in order to like uh, uh, I mean uh, automate uh, things testing uh, with respect to like uh, Android devices. So this is a similar kind of setup uh, which I was explaining. So there's a host machine and we have the LXC container and we communicated with uh, Fastboot and ADB. Uh, to a Google Pixel uh, devices, which is connected from the host uh, host machine's uh, USB port. So that was about the demo. And that's what uh, I wanted to like, uh, deliver as part of this talk. Thank you for watching. So if there are any questions, I can take for, we have another four minutes. Um, you showed that you stopped the container with LXC stop, but that's like turning off the power of a machine, right? Yes. Is there some command to give it a soft reboot or something, a regular shutdown from the outside? Uh, I mean, uh, that is not supported. Uh, we don't have any uh, reboot or LXC reboot, uh, some kind of commands. The only way to do, uh, I mean, uh, a reset or reboot is to stop and then uh, do a start. 
So stop uh, internally what it does is it does a kill of uh, all the jobs which is running or, uh, at that point of time in the container. So there is no uh, clean way of doing an LXC uh, shutdown. But it's probably still more cleaner than shutting up uh, shutting off the power of a regular PC because it still can write the cached files yeah. and things yeah. like that. But uh, the user space tools doesn't provide that. Maybe uh, that could be an addition. And of course, like uh, I'm not one of the LXC uh, developers, but I'm uh, just a user of LXC. Maybe like uh, this could be a good feature to be uh, added to LXC user space tools. In this case, uh, you were showing up sys as uh, system containers, right? Yeah. Uh, if uh, I kill off uh, every process in a system <laughs> container, does it uh, is it the same than than uh, stopping it? For me, I didn't. Uh, if get I, I if I kill each process okay. in a system container, is it considered stopped? Uh, yes, uh, it is uh, equivalent to a, a stop. So that, uh, I mean, kill has to uh, happen from the host machine. Right. Yeah. I'm not sure whether the LXC LS status would show stopped if you manually kill all the processes inside the container. So you, you'll have the same sort of effect, but actually you should still use LXE stop to make sure that your, your own status of the container is right. Uh, you may find it um, problematic to destroy the container if you've manually killed all the processes and haven't actually run LXE stop. Just so that LXC has got its own um, status in order. Uh, more questions? And, and Rhonda, in answer to your question, the, um, the start and stop, it is approximately enough to do a, um, like a soft reboot of the container. Um, yeah, because it also, start and stopping, it also um, takes away the devices that you've added, you would have to add them okay. again afterwards, so it does do a, a clean sort of uh, refresh of the container. Um, and once, once stop is returned, there's nothing happening inside that container, so it is, it is safe to destroy that, and any um, file system caches and things will have been flushed at that point by Alexi. Hello. <coughs> Hello. This is a new, newbie question. Why do I want, what's the use case of running Android phone attached to a container? So, uh, as I said, like, uh, we used to do this from the dispatcher machine, which is nothing but a production server. Okay. So, if you want to like, uh, have different versions of Java in order to run uh, different Android tests on the uh, device, right? So, we need to have those versions of uh, like, uh, Java installed in, uh, say, for example, Lava Dispatcher server. So, it becomes, uh, like, it becomes uh, difficult to manage that. So we want to like have a contained environment uh, where it, it, it's nothing but a sandbox where we can like uh, put a lot of software uh, and then like uh, scratch it off once the job is over or when the, once the testing is over. So, so I think uh, we are all, I mean uh, running out of time. So thanks for uh, watching. I mean uh, thanks for listening to me. Uh, I mean, that's it. Okay, let's thank again our speaker and let's go grab a coffee or something. <laughs>